if the music's too uh too quiet or too loud all right lembos is bgfv <laughs> BGFV overcrowded. What does that even mean? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Does that mean we have too many people in it, so we'll we'll cause a crash? No, like the FOMO is not even started yet. So we got a couple things going on here. Got some Lambos getting handed out. <laughs> So let's chart it without after hours first, so so you guys can see what's going on. Throw the Lambo. There we go. So let's go on the daily. Chart it on the daily. The Lambo's getting him away. Let's get rid of everything. There we go. Lambo's gone. So, BGFV did a bunch of awesome things today. Not only did it open above our pivot here, it closed any gap that it had, and then closed at all-time highs. Well, closed at an all-time high in terms of an all-time high close. The previous all-time high close was here and here. While it all-time highs was... 4270 which we broke after hours we got all the way up to 4417 there's certain things that happen Pour myself a glass here. The song is not living up to my expectations. Let's change it up. The market is crashing. Yeah, I'll top it off. I'll fax over a drink to you. So here's another cool thing. So you could do this as a large cup or even like a smaller cup. The reality is we're going to do some intrinsic targets and some extrinsic targets, right? So let's say this is your cup right here. Just just this right here. Low to high. You put that there. Oh, look. We already hit that. Now, that would put us at... 42. That would put us at where we close, basically. So we want to close above that. Now, if you go above low to high here, and then you put that up here, a, so you can put that. Hold on a second. I gotta get a line here. That puts us with a potential target of 5580-ish. We're going to get into the fundamentals of BGFE. There's a reason why you literally could just buy shares and hold them. Because there's lots of great things going on. So, I'm going to do a couple price targets here. Then we're going to go into fundamental price targets as well. So, we're going to do technical price targets based on intrinsic and extrinsic. What I'm doing right now are called uh, head and shoulders. Dapper, if you're here, you could notice there's a clear butt cheek formation going on right here. So 
So what you can do is, let's say, all right, so we can either count this as a wave or this as a wave. So which one is the wave? Is this the wave right here? If we're doing that, we're going to go off of low to high. And we're just going to do a 618. So that would put us at a low price target of 45 tomorrow. Now we're hoping for something a little bit more fireworks than 45, but hey, 45 will all make really good money, right? So, and then that would put us with a second PT in here and a high PT around 60 with potential PTs up here. And up here. Now this is our old one. I think we're actually going to be hitting a better PT here. And what I'm going to be going off of is I think this is five ways up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And then we're going up right here. So this would be one down here. <laughs> Got a dislike. The dislike's the one that didn't get in, I bet. Or it's or it's uh <laughs> it's actually <laughs> it's actually probably Air Drake because he said if I talked about BGFV the whole time he was gonna get go to sleep. Alright, so now let's go on the hourly. Alright, so couple things are important here we got our extrinsics which we've hit now we're doing our are these are our intrinsics now we're doing our extrinsic targets so you can do uh, intrinsic as well if you want to do a one for one you just do a one for one and then that would put us right there at 47 now if you did a fib extension off of this bottom to high these were the new price targets I was talking about. So again, first price target around 54. Second price target we'll put in here. So then we're starting to create clusters is what we're doing. So you get in your cluster there. And then this is your 112-ish area that I was talking about. Did I measure that right? So we could delete our lines. So you have a lot of smaller price targets to get over. So what's probably going to happen is, hello, gas, gaseous xenon. So this is from Ortex. This is their sh live short data. So a couple things happened today. Uh, shorts covered, freeing up a couple of more short shares to get shorted. Um, we'll see if the cost of borrow goes up tomorrow. That's going to be really what is important is if this spikes tomorrow, which I imagine it will spike. So. This should go up tomorrow. I imagine we'll see this go down as well as shorts start to cover in the AM. That would be my guess. Yeah, Yunjin, like, I got December's originally because the 19th, the 17th, you know, if you don't... Theoretically, they don't have to cover till the after hours, and they don't have to even report those for three days after. So... Theoretically, even though they have to cover by the 16th, 17th, you might not actually see the squeeze till about 20th. So, the fact that we're getting it now is awesome because we don't have to wait that long. Um, there's important things to know about Big Five. One, it's got a 20 million share float. Two, 
it's got 10 million shares, or about 9 million now. 9 million shares of the 20 million are shorted. So it's got a small float, which means that when buying starts from the covering, this thing has potential to go absolutely bonkers. And right now it's at all-time highs, which means all the shorts are losing money right now. So when cost to borrow goes up tomorrow, they're going to start losing money just by holding. And as it keeps going up, they're going to come to a point where they're going to get margin called because the original shareholders are going to want their shares back so that they could potentially sell. So at that point, it's it's just uh, it, there's nothing the shorts can do at that point. And we could take a look at some past examples as well to see um, sometimes if people aren't greedy or if people are greedy ah what's the right word if people are fearful they take profits fast and the shorts can win but if you have a strong army like you did with GameStop where you force them to sh like the shorts aren't just going to give up for free they're not going to be like ugh you know they're going to try the reason the short interest is so high is they keep trying to suppress the price so they keep pushing the price down so that you know there was an original short squeeze right here. So the original short squeeze on BGFV happened on their last earnings, which coincidentally, I talked about this in my video when it was at $25. Um, right here, the short interest was only 17%. So you can see off of 17%, it went from $19 to $35, almost double. And if we turn on extended hours, let's see if it got better than that. I didn't actually examine this, so uh, it went to $35. Okay, so $19 all the way up to $35. Overnight, you know, this thing was going from $19 to $24, and it was just going crazy overnight. And during the day, it didn't actually run as much as you would think, but, you know, the overnights were the big ones. And then it did occasionally did run a lot overnight. So, you know, doubling of the stock isn't necessarily unheard of here so it's possible we open at $80 tomorrow plus 70 you know I said 74 um, certainly possible you know this this box right here would be my dream scenario we open here and then we run to here um, granted this is like literally dreaming the more likely scenario is you know maybe we open around 45 47 the shorts are still not covering because they know they got two weeks before they really have to cover. So the reason they covered last time is this special dividend. They're not. They don't. It's not costing them anything other than the interest for holding. Like they can hold forever as long as they pay the interest, right? But when there's a special dividend, they actually have to pay that to the shareholders that they're shorting from. So. That means it's costing them out of pocket and there's a reason why companies do special dividends it's because they're doing really well so the fact that they've done two special dividends this year two to give money back to the shareholders because they're making so much money tells us this is a fundamentally sound stock to invest in Zena, that's a great question. Why do they all cover at the same time? So it's kind of uh, a, like a snowball effect. Uh, right now, we're pushing the snowball down the hill, gaining momentum. You know, it's getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually, the surface area of the snowball is going to get so big that it's going to literally just double in size over and over and over and over. So right now we're doubling in size over and over and the surface of our snowball is getting bigger and bigger. So as the share price goes up, more shorts start to cover and they're almost fighting each other to cover first so they lose less money. So as the shorts cover, the price continues to go up and then more share shorts are rushing to get in before they lose even more money. And then you have the double effect of margin calls starting to happen where people want their shorts their shares back because they see the stock is up so much they're like well this is the point where i would sell so they they then want the stock back from the brokers which then causes a margin call so they have to give the stock back 
Then you have the other effect where the FOMO people come in like us <laughs> and the Redditors and the stock Twitters and the Twitter, the fin twit people. They're all jumping on it because they see the potential. So they're just buying to cause the short squeeze, right? So you have all those things going on and then you just have the investors and all that too that are just holding or hodling or whatever you want to call it. And it's just, it's the perfect storm. It happens, in my opinion, very rare you see it maybe once or twice a year this is this year is actually for me i've seen more short squeezes this year than any other year i've ever seen and i think it has to do with the fact that people realize we can cause them now um you know the individual people where we just like the stock um i really like bgfv i think it has a great dividend and long-term value so um by no means am i recommending the investing in the stock i just personally like it but you know where you see gamestop where you could see the short squeeze and then you start to get the gamma squeeze on top of it um there's just all these factors weigh on each other and it's it's like a self-appealing prophecy at one point so let's talk about the fundamentals i think this is something that is why i like bgfe so much uh the fundamentals tell me it, it can sustain a hundred dollar share price just on the fundamentals so let's go into it um corsair is a great stock don't sell that you probably got a little bit of baggage right now but it is still a great stock we can actually go into that one tonight so i'm gonna show you something All right, so we're going to show here, can this, can I, nope, okay, this doesn't work. Okay, so dividend yield, nice dividend, 3%. They did two special dividends of $2 today, so you got 10% back, well, it was like 7% back, 8% back, just in special dividends today, plus your normal dividends, so you're getting back 11 to 12% a year currently in dividends, so you get... 12% dividend yield per year, you can see growing financials, improved debt to assets, improved profit margins, year over year, quarter over quarter. Um, you know, this last quarter wasn't quite as good, but they said that was due, I, I forget the exact reason, There was they had a really good explanation for it, and I, I'm sorry I'm not remembering right now, but, you know, all of these things are good. So I want to show you this, pr this price to earnings ratio is what really is interesting so 7.5 i have a clip here current s p average ratio of all the companies in the s p 500 is 29.5 so this one 7.5 one quarter of what a normal company in the s p 500 is valued at right so just fundamentally just by pe ratio price to earnings so just by the way they make money they should be a hundred and fifty dollar stock so if they were to be average to the s p 500 they should be a hundred and fifty dollars a share that right there is what got me excited about this in the first place so the fact that it's fundamentally undervalued provides fuel to this so uh, I think the dividends paid December 1st so let's go into more so we can go into more so you can see throughout the year PE ratio 3 3.6 3.94 5 so you know the PE ratio is going up but that's because the stock is going up cash flow 160 million free cash 168 free cash flow right now so they got 168 million in the bank oops what did i do 168 million in the bank 870 million ba uh market cap balance sheet 700 total million in assets 469 million in liabilities so they have a net of 233 million 
So 233, yeah, 231 million uh, net liabilities, 168 million cash. Like book value could be better. I will admit a book value investable in the one to four range um, is where you want to invest for the long term. A healthy book value in the S&P 500 is usually between 5 and 10. So the book value side of things, I could see that argument with it not being that. But I'm just going to pull something up just for giggles here. Tesla's book value, 28. P.E. ratio, 376. Everyone loves Tesla. Probably not one for one ratio. Probably need to compare it to its peers like Dix and ASO and things like that. So if we were to look into like Dix, you could see price to earnings 10 in line there. Uh, balance sheet, book share, 35. Dix Sporting Goods is huge. So Dix is another one that's shorted um, that we don't talk about as much. But <laughs> thanks, Busy. Um, the big thing about all of these stores is people were betting on the decline of retail and what happened was when covid hit all these sport sporting goods stores got shorted so much because everyone was like well these stores are going to go out of business because they can't retain like who's going to be buying sporting goods when people can't play sports right well turns out people still love playing sports so you know aso is a famous one Oh wow, my chart looks amazing. <laughs> I don't remember charting that. Must have charted that falling wedge there. Sometimes it's fun to look back at a chart and realize you charted it perfectly and predicted it perfectly. It's fun. What's up, Mr. Humit? I can't hear the music. I need something. I need something that really, really kicks. Something that really gets the music flowing. I got it. This will get this will get everyone. So ASO is one that was literally this is what I call a slow squeeze. This is literally a long squeeze. So what's happening on this is people keep shorting and thinking it's the top, and it's a perpetual squeeze. It's what happened to Tesla. People keep trying to short Tesla, and it just is a never-ending prophecy where it keeps going up. So, like, ASO, look at this cup and handle on this. Oh my god, this looks like... <laughs> This is nuts, so this is one you should put on your... Oh, man, I'm going to set an alert on this right now. Like The fact that this is a cup and handle shorter than your all-time highs? Yes, sign me up, please. No, we're not done with BGFV. <laughs> Too loud. I need to turn it down. All right, sorry. I just was trying to get the hype on, you know? But... So ASO still 17% shorted, near all-time highs. None of the other stats are good. So this is, like I said, this is just a slow squeeze where shorts slowly cover over time. But the thing about this was people were expecting it to be bad, and turns out they still are really good. So price to earnings, 6.7, like I was talking about. Free cash flow, um, you know, they have done offerings lately, so they've raised cash that way, I think, uh, or they've invested in things. Uh, still 583 million cash flow. Still 1.3 billion in assets, positive assets. Book value is a little higher, but the only one that hasn't caught up to say, 
go, go, go. Yeah. I actually got a better song than this for, if you want to say. Uh, So let's go back to BGFE. So, like I said, just keep ASO on your target. It might be one that you could just long, in my opinion. Um, it's just good to get shares of because it just slowly always goes up. And with a cup and handle, you know, it's something that could run another ten dollars. So, um, all right, let me uh, let me go back and get this other hype song. Out. All right, this is what we're going to be playing tomorrow for hype. I'm gonna turn, if it's too loud, let me know. I want to blast it in my ears, though. It gets me pumped up. Uh, and if you guys weren't ready for that, that, you know, it might be a little bit before your time, but your kids are going to love that song that I just played. I knew this was going to happen. Can we get into BGFV right now? The FOMO is going to be so real. Depends on where it opens tomorrow, to be honest. Um, it, it, I, I can't tell you right now, because I don't know where it's going to open. My best bet would be to stay up till 4 in the morning, and then try to buy it at 4 in the morning in the pre-market, with shares, um, if it's sub $45. But... Like, just play it with shares instead of trailing stop. I feel like that's so safe a way to play it and not get FOMO, so you can still feel like you're part of it. And it helps everyone, too. Like, because you just want, you just like the stock and you want to hold shares for the dividend. So, you know, that's that's a good thing that, you know, worst case scenario, it continues going up and you get you get the dividend. I own a bunch of shares, personally. I, I'm probably going to hold those no matter what, sell covered calls on them and hold them for the dividend. I'm gonna make money like just like the IV on this is so crazy like making money on my covered calls plus getting the dividend like oh man like shares instead of options Ooh, right it's like I like gambling if you want to get if you want to get calls tomorrow um, just watch the price action if it opens up over 4270 just play the levels so what you're gonna do I'm gonna do you guys freaking solid right now. I'm going to publish this for you and you can download this chart and use it yourself for your own levels. You can, if you're following me on trading, you can go get this. If it's a little loud, dubs you too young. You got, you got fresh ears still. You got to blow your eardrums out a little like me. You'll get there. Is this better? Alright, so... We're gonna make this public. Long category. Fundamental. Trend. Wave. I'll publish this on my Twitter for you as well. What's going on here? Sorry, I'm just making this good for you guys all right um there you go it's published i will share this link in the chat you can get this you can get the levels to this and there you go so hopefully you guys this helps so just play the levels if it goes above, you can you can play those, get in. If it goes below, then you know, 
what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm just basically going to set stop losses and trailing stops. And I'm just going to let it basically do... It's basically let it do what it what it wants to do. I'm not gonna get emotionally attached. I'm not gonna say it has to go to 100 for me to sell. I'm literally just gonna let it talk to me. I'm gonna open my ears. Let me tell it. It's gonna let me tell. I'm gonna let it tell me what it wants to do. I'm gonna take profits accordingly, right? So there's no way I will ever let my current trade go go red. So know that. If it if it's going to go red, that means I could probably get a better re-entry and play the next leg up. So you might see something, for instance, like like this. You know? Well, hold on. It probably wouldn't do that because where's the dividend date? There it is, right there. So this is the X dividend date. You can see it on the chart. Right there. This is when they have to cover by potentially. So it's possible. It's possible you see something like this. So keep that in mind. It may not squeeze completely tomorrow because the shorts are still going to try to attack us. It may or may not. But the thing is, is you just got to let it talk to you. Take your profits accordingly. If it makes another cup, say, you know, make maybe it, it cups an action like here. And you can take profits here, wait for the IV to drop. Get back in when it gets near all-time highs again. And then play the next pop. So, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I talked about that on my Twitter before. Um... I talked about this on my Twitter. You want me to play this song? I had someone DM me a song I'm supposed to play. One second. Oh, that's too loud. How do I turn that down? It's too loud! No, I can't do that. So I'm supposed to be playing... Mike Candy's vibe. Is this supposed to be a good song or something? Alright, there you go. I fixed it. Can I chart posh? Yeah, we can do posh. I can go over it. I'm going to be honest with you. You're not going to like what I'm going to chart, but that's fine. Like, it literally got annihilated today. It's not worth playing anymore the whole play was to play the potential catalyst of a short squeeze um, it did not work it literally hit all-time lows like the stock has only gone down I really thought there was potential because we got the unusual call flow that it would go up but I'll be honest, I don't know if your guys' taste in music is uh, similar to mine. You know, the original pump song was Sandstorm by Darude. That was the original pump song. If you wanted to get pumped up, you play Sandstorm. Alright, let me... Let me see if there's any other short interest candidates out there. I'm not gonna lie. What is this? And Gold Corp. Interesting. So, I keep seeing this one everywhere, so I feel like I should cover it. Um, Progeny 
It's literally like the number one stock that people keep talking about on the Reddit short squeeze thing. Like, it's just everywhere. People think progeny, 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 uh, progenity, or whatever you... <gasps> prog, like, whatever you want to call it, could be the next ultimate short squeeze, right? What is that sound? Alright, so... I'm gonna run the data on this, post it on the screen, we're gonna talk about this. Really, what is that sound? It's driving me nuts. There's a couple of reasons why progeny gets keeps getting talk about progenity. So it's got a bunch of things that are good for it in terms of uh on, something's like Making clicky sounds, and I don't know what it is. It's driving me nuts, though. Alright, so anyways. Cost to borrow, up to 135%, depending on the exchange. There it is again. Alright, so, yeah, right? <laughs> Current short, short interest, 39%. Cost to borrow, 68.9%. Utilization, 99.87%. So, it's got all the data in terms of short interest. It's It's got some other good things going. Um, you know, I calculated this blue line is where the average short is around 2 to $3. I really think once this gets over four dollars again, you could really see a squeeze. Uh, I am worried about the tilted head and shoulders here, so I'm not playing this, not getting interested until it gets over 375, and most likely over four. But over four dollars, virginity could be very interesting. They do have earnings this week as well, so if you wanted to take a gamble. The earnings is where you would take a gamble. I will tell you, all the fundamental data is absolutely horrible on it, though. So that is why I love Big Five, is because from a fundamental standpoint, you could literally just buy shares and not worry really about losing money because it's probably worth what your shares are right now at a minimum right and then you add in the dividends you're gonna get your money back one way or the other with virginity there's a good chance the company is gonna go out of business and you lose all your money um, the fact that they literally like I've just had the worst worst financials I've seen in, in many like they literally don't make money and they lose 80,000 a quarter like they have m double the debt to assets cash flow like there is the reason for this being shorted could be shot at you from a bazooka and you, like it's just alright blink or helion well helion is not a company so blink I would go with helion's another phrase for Nikola both aren't real companies Blink, I've actually seen their products at, I went 
you know, when I go to the store and I see charging stations, they say blink on them. So I know they actually sell stuff. Or Helion is a company that maybe one day might sell stuff, but probably will go out of business and be a failed startup. But hey, they IPO'd and made a bunch of money, right? So, whatever. Workhorse is going out of business, too. Fubo. Yeah, let's talk about Fubo. I want to talk about Fubo. Because Fubo had pretty good numbers, um, to be honest with you. So, I don't think it's going to stay down. SDC is going out of business, too. We can look at CGC, sure. We should talk about Fubo, because I know I swung Fubo calls. And I know probably... A lot of you probably did as well. Uh, well. Fubo stats aren't as good as they used to be for short squeeze wise. but Looks like a lot of shorts covered up to earnings and that might be why we had this. But this looks like a 1, 2, 3, 4 for me. But, or maybe this is the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe. We'll see. But you got 15% short interest, no cost to borrow, no utilization. So all we really care about is the 15%. In terms of that, they had earnings today, so we're going to turn on after hours and see what happened. So the good news is it closed above this pivot. So this is very, very important. So this pivot right here at 30, 50, 30, 40 in this area, you can see it wicked down. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, so it wicked down to my support down here, and then came all the way back and closed above here. If it can hold 30, 20 tomorrow, if it holds 30, 20, we might be fine. Because like I said, they they hit all time high users. All the data was pretty good. They missed slightly on EPS. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to hold my FUBO calls tomorrow. I got weeks on them. Um, I got 30 calls, so I actually went super deep in the money. So my calls are still going to be in the money tomorrow. So all I need to do is just get back to 35. This looks like it could form a cup and handle situation almost. So... We'll see. So you guys want me to talk about Upstart and CGC. So Upstart. Hey, look at that. I had this charted. Said it could do one of two things. Looks like it followed my red path. So I got Upstart coming down to 191. And then... Then if you want to long it, I don't care. But fundamentally, Upstart is crazy overrated. I mean, even if you just were to go head and shoulders. Uh, you know, 228, maybe you could buy it at 228. And we talked about this, 200 price to earning ratio cash flow you know that they don't really make money so they do have some good assets right now so I'm cool with their book value income statement you know they do I guess they do make a little bit of money um, some positive earnings which is good but the thing is is they're just they're overvalued <laughs> yeah you can interest me in some course here I'll buy some tomorrow how's that sound I'll, I'll, I'll add some to the investor account tomorrow Yeah, that might be true, Option Master. But I just, I tried to talk to Sundog. Um, I, I know he loves the business and what they're in. And it could potentially go back up, but it ran too hard, too fast, created a head and shoulders, and now it needs to cool off. And then new investors will get excited and it'll run hard again, right? So... I-O-N-Q. What is the fudge is this? Is this a SPAC? This looks like it was a SPAC. What is the... What are they... This used to be a SPAC. Okay. Manufactures quantum computers. 
That sounds cool as hell. No wonder it ran up. That's just like a cool field to be in. Naked? I have no thoughts on it. I'm staying away from that. Quantum computers. I mean, that, that alone just sounds cool. Looks like they got earnings coming up in, two, in a week. I mean... Wix... I, it looks... looks toppy. One, two, three, four, five. You got five waves up. Probably come back down and fill the gap to, you know, around 16, I imagine. So... Not doing Palantir. Palantir's going back to 20 eventually. I want to look at Corsair. What is go- Ooh! You know, these inside bars going into my time fib sure are interesting. That would- hold on. This is- this has got super interesting. It looks like they missed earnings, which isn't cool. I'll talk about bros here in a second. Looks like shorts are starting to run out of ammunition on this, so you might get a pop here. If we get a market-wide short squeeze going on, a lot of these tickers are setting up to be squeezed, so... Um... <laughs> you and Gene, that's so true. I'm naked right now. Uh, short interest, 28.2%. Cost of borrows going up. Current utilization, 93%. So, you got some data there. I mean, $25, fundamentally, you know, about probably 30% fundamentally undervalued. So you got some good upside there. They got good assets. Uh, balance sheet could, book value is really good. Income statement, I don't like that you've had decreasing income the last four. Like this, to me, these last four quarters is a little bit of a red flag. So it may take towards Christmas to squeeze this. Um, I expect the fourth quarter to be very well. Like, I literally am using all Corsair products. I have Corsair mouse, Corsair keyboard, Corsair mouse pad. I will say my monitors aren't Corsair. Actually, no, I have a Logitech mouse. I have the G502. Um, but um, I do really like their products. They're very, very high-end. Heard it again. It's gonna drive me nuts. All right. So, anyways, um, yeah, uh, bros. I see that keep getting asked. So, all right. So, looks like it. All right. You know, does this have earnings today? Didn't it go nuts after I was? Hold on. I gotta be on the hourly. Hold on. That's right. Uh, oh no, it didn't. I thought it did. All right. So. Yeah, we might play Disney tomorrow. There's a lot of FUD on Disney, and it's scaring me a little bit. But, I don't know, like, I feel like Disney could go. I'll probably put about five grand into Disney, just because I, I have to play it. I play it every earnings, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, I'm pretty sure... This is tomorrow after hours? Okay. So... I do like you have a one, two, three, four. Logically, you should see a five wave. Um, logically. So we'll see though. I mean, fifth wave, probably put it at around 92. This is typical in a fresh IPO, you usually get huge waves. So. What does FUD mean? I wish I had the search app. Um, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So, FUD basically is like news, uh, which which drives fear, which drives uncertainty, which drives doubt, which means people don't want to invest, right? So, the one nice thing you have for bros is it's extremely overbought. You do have bullish divergence here, so you can see the RSI is going up. Uh, while the price is actually lower. So you have bullish divergence. Uh, you just have a lot of good things. 
going up. So um, I think analysts are under. See, the, here's what bothers me the most about analysts, and they're like, "Whoa, subscriber growth is slowing down." Okay, well, I still have a f ton of subscribers, and I just raised prices, right? So my earnings are gonna be phenomenal, and no one in the business this is my long thesis on Disney no one in the business has better IP than Disney they own all the good franchises all of them Ader so <sighs> wish I could figure out what's making that sound it's driving me nuts um Alright. So Ater went nuts off earnings and sold off all day. Unfortunately, you know, the shorts just always win on the stock I have found. Let me see where the short interest is right now. Hey, you're welcome. Boxel, I have no thoughts on Boxel. I usually I just don't ever look at it. You know, the, the short date on Ada, Ada, Ada Hitler. Uh, so, you know, I played Ada on the original squeeze. We can actually look at that as something that may happen. And so short data is not bad, but it's, for me, it's just not worth doing. There's nothing, there's not enough there. So you can see we had a nice short squeeze. This is kind of what happened originally. So we are... So this is what happened. This is actually wonderful. So, so you see, we had our original pump here, our huge sell-off, but it held the line, and then basically got back to here, and then that's when it went nuts. So let's bring this back to BGFV. Let's uh, ooh, actually, let's do this. Let's. Where is it? It's right. Let's do a bars pattern. Let's do this. Let's do this. Can I take this? Can I take this down here? How do I get this? Aha! There we go. Ha, ah, look at that. There you go. So there's like your... Not quite the same, but... I'm beginning to think maybe it's this song I'm playing. Oh, I love this song. So... I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's not exa It's never exactly the same, right? Like, nothing's ever a one-for-one. One. But you can see the price action similar, where it goes down, dips, goes up, dips. And then you see, basically... You know, we might get a dip tomorrow and rip, but it's going to go before the dividend. So you're probably looking, you know, it's just accelerated timeline. So the price action is the same, but the timeline is accelerated because we actually have an event that accelerates the squeeze on BGFE. With the other squeezes such as support.com, um, ASO, uh, 
Ader, the one that we just looked at. All of these squeezes have no catalyst. They're just naturally people buying to get shorts to cover. This actually has a catalyst that creates a timeline. So shorts are trying to cover now before they're stuck at the end. Like what happens if it's at $50 going into the dividend and still 40% shorted? That day or two before the dividend are going to be absolutely bonkers. Well, oh, CGC had earnings today. Looks like it dipped and ripped. Interesting. I'm thinking this could happen on Fubo, by the way. This dip and rip action, this is why I'm not going to sell Fubo tomorrow. I have in the money, month out calls. I am not selling Fubo at where it could be the lowest price possible. I like the, I like the earnings report. I'm going to hold Fubo. So, uh, CJC, I think once it gets back over this $15 mark, so this is what I did last time CGC was here. So when CGC was back here, I bought leaps here. It's gonna, like, CG, uh, weed goes in cycles, so unfortunately each cycle is smaller because the short interest gets smaller and smaller, but there's no reason... CGC can't be back to 20 20 dollar 25 20 30 dollar stock right so just if you're gonna play weed get in the money one to two year out contracts or shares and you'll be fine which reminds me of weed how is IIPR doing holy mother of goodness Oh man, I own this since $60. This is the best weed stock I've ever seen. Like, like this is the only weed stock that just consistently, <laughs> consistently goes up. Um, it pays a dividend too, right? So. All right. Um... Would you do LH, Tom? I looked at LH today, and I almost bought it, and then I was like, nah. And the reason is, is you got some, you know, I played it off for this run back here, which was nice. I was worried because you have this. So, I don't love that formation. It looks very bearish. I mean, it had a really big volume today because they had like their news conference today in terms of fundamentals like fundamentals yeah you should go long on it it's great fundamental stock in terms of earnings and all that uh, but I think you could get a better price I think it's gonna come back down to maybe 250 maybe even 230 but they've never look look at this look at these earnings green 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 since 2019 they've always beaten estimates and so you know even off the last earnings they beat estimates and they they had a red day when they beat earnings that just doesn't make sense to me so have a good night Eugene How long have I been trading? I've been trading about a couple weeks now. Uh, BGFE. I've learned a lot and made a lot of money. No. <laughs> I've been trading about five years now. Um, I went full time. I quit my, my six figure job um, in February of this year. And I've been full time CEO of TFC and trading with you guys 24 7, it seems like so since then but it took me a long time to get there even after like three years of knowledge I still like I just make stupid mistakes and now now I've gotten to the point where like I just 
I don't let emotions get in the way. If if the chart isn't doing what I want it to do, I just will quit it and move on. So, Maddie, it was sell the news. People, uh, it was fantastic news, by the way. Like, it was a buying opportunity, in my opinion. But basically, algos kicked in, stop losses happened, and uh, the FUD kicked in. So, uh, for me, ooh, I do like this. So you have bullish divergence here, which is interesting. So bullish divergence on LH is a good sign. This huge green candle is a good sign. CRISPR, this is a $40 stock. Ooh, I was wrong there. This is really old. That was, what, what from like a year ago I did that? It was right on the pullback, but not on the, not on the bounce up, so. Not always right. I haven't looked at this in forever. Lambo or Rambo? No, it's Lambo or Ramen. So... I mean, it was one of the hardest decisions I ever made quitting my job. I had company phone, company car, six-figure-plus job. I could work my own hours as long as I did what I wanted and as long as I hit my numbers. You know, my boss basically told me, hey, you're a salesman. As long as you grow at 30% rate, I will never... You could do whatever you want. And I was growing at a 70% plus increase in sales year over year for my territory and for my state. And, you know, I was a manager of the number one sales territory. It was just one of those things where I didn't hate my job either. I actually liked it. You know, I worked with thousands of people that I enjoyed and we respected each other. And honestly, if, if something catastrophic ever happened, I would probably go back and continue to do it again. But... I sold, uh, this is one of the reasons why I probably love Dow stocks. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I worked and specialized in auto maintenance products. So um, I sold petroleum based auto maintenance products. So like, like oil, transmission oil, um, engine cleaners, things like that. Anything that's liquid that went in your car, I was the one that would supply it to your dealer. I was the one that would train like I would train the entire staff of that dealer to sell my product so if you go to a dealer and they try to upsell you a, a coolant exchange or a transmission exchange or a brake fluid exchange there's a good chance my company or one of my associates uh, uh, or one of my associates trained that person to do that I need to take a 30 second break. Um, I just spilled wine on the blanket I was holding. So I'm going to throw this in the washer. It's right across the room for me. Give me give me a minute and I'll come back and I'll take some requests. In the meantime, um, I'm just going to throw this in the washer real quick so it doesn't get stained. Uh, <laughs> super random. And put some symbols, <laughs> put some tickers that you want me to chart. We can, we can go for another 30 minutes or so. Stop counting. I'm going to put you in timeout. And I'm back. Look at that. That wasn't even that long. Yeah, I just like... 
what happened. I put it on my, my desk in front of me. And a fly flew in front of me and I tried to swat it. I knocked my glass over. Crazy. Edit. Ah, eye cancer drug. Yeah, let's see. What do I think about Dash and Affirm? Hmm. I'm a boomer, so for me, I don't know, like, I, I know Dash is going after hours. Makes no freaking sense. I think Dash is living in a bubble and eventually is going to be one of those stocks that's like $40. Um, wow, this went crazy after hours today. Look at that candle. So it dipped down to 174 and then rocketed $40. 50 Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to look in the earnings because something like that move means they must have had, had a really good earnings. Um, that's crazy. One second. So, um, I got no thoughts one way or the other, because this obviously meant they have good earnings, but I'd have to deep dive them in, and I don't have the time tonight to do that. But I really think Dash is overpriced, so. Uh, Affirm. The thing about Affirm is it's going to run tomorrow, because it's at support. I think you could get into Affirm and open and see that run probably $10 tomorrow. Uh, I do think it's overpriced. Ooh, ah, uh, oh, god damn, okay, ah, I might be wrong on this one, the chart looks bullish as hell, um, sheesh, yeah, firm's earnings are after market tomorrow, I mean, I mean, that's a cup and handle, I mean, by the letter of the law, that's this could go crazy. He might put this at 200 plus. Yeah, we still live. I took a 60 second break. Come on. Where's BX going? Where's this coming from? Why are you asking about BX? Is this, is this better? <laughs> what time is the rug pull? I don't know what rug pull you're going towards. So, the, if you're referring to... I want to talk about this, actually. Let's talk about what happened here. I think this is important to understand. What happened the first time on BGFV. So, oh, that chart looks glorious now that I'm looking at it. So, I want to talk about this. Right? Like, what happened? There's a combination of things. So there's a combination of things that, uh, oh, there's the Dash partnership, maybe that was what it was. The European partnership. So, um, there's a combination of things. So, right around here, 37. So, this was when me and a bunch of TD Ameritrade stockholders were getting called around 37 to 38 dollars in this range my mic is off K 
Can you hear me? Mic is weird. Hold on. Mic is weird. Better? We good? Okay. Ah. I wish someone would have told me first. Zenon, you're always there to have my back. I appreciate that. Alright, let's start over. I don't know what you guys heard, what you didn't. Um, I wanted to talk about this waterfall right now. So so that you guys didn't freak out and be like, ah, rug pull. So Bad now? What? I didn't move it. Do anything. Ooh, maybe this is it. Alright. Better? Hold on, I have an idea. Better? Better? Testing 10-4. You sent me a new headset? Yeah, my $300 headset's not very good. I probably should get a new one that's probably like $30. Those tend to last longer. I feel like Air Drake right now. My robot voice? Come on, guys. Testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me now? Excellent. All right, cool, let's move on. <laughs> the Hello Kitty one. Dude, I'm totally gonna buy that and wear that on live with, with my screen watching right now. I actually have my my webcam uh, facing me, but I'm naked, so I'm not gonna turn that on. All right, so here's what happened. So. <laughs> so here's what happened. Um, Right around here, I talked about this on my Twitter. I haven't really talked about it other than that. So if you follow me on my Twitter, uh, around here, the shorts, they knew they were in trouble, right? Like it gapped up off of the news of the dividend. They wanted to basically cause a waterfall effect and take out everyone's stop losses so that they could cover. And then they probably, a lot of the, the smart shorts covered down here below their average so they didn't lose money so the smart shorts covered probably right here right here and right here right so what happened was they loaded up as many shares as possible as many shares as possible they knew they had 10 million shares short so they tried to get as many shares as possible you want me to post my Twitter? Uh, yeah, the, here's a link to the broadcast on this, by the way. Uh, here, right here. This will take you to my Twitter. Just Tamikaze one. But um, they loaded up as many shares as possible as they could. So they were calling TD Ameritrade and they said, I don't care what it costs, I'll pay up to $41 a share to get BGFV. This is documented real knowledge. So they said give me your shares. I'll pay 30% premium if po or I'll pay up to 10% premium on these. So if at 37 I'll pay up to 10% premium to get these up to $41. Um, Gomez, I'm not going to say it can't happen because once the fear strikes people get scared and this is the short squeeze this is why short squeezes are awesome but they're also what make people nervous is that you can get these waterfall effects because once once people start selling it then causes other people to sell and then it takes out stop losses and then the algos kick in and they short it more because they see it drop more than five percent like the fact that i design algos I know that the other algos are picking up because if I'm picking it up, that means other algos are picking it up, and it's it's literally a cascading effect. It's the snowball effect, but in reverse, which is why shares are so great on short squeezes because you can literally just set a trailing stop or a stop loss, and there's no way to lose money. Yeah, a waterfall may take you out, but you're still gonna make money. So, so what happened was there that whale that was short the stock 
was also longing the stock but wasn't covering the shorts. So instead of covering the shorts, it was actually buying actual shares. And then when it hit this 42 mark, this 42, like when it hit this 42 mark, they closed millions of shares at market all at once to trigger the waterfall and to start it. And because it's such a low flow stock, this is the one thing we do need to be worried about is if they were to try this again, I doubt they could do it now. Um, because they, they basically took their wad and they shot it and that was their best attempt but it didn't work because we came right back and now we're, we closed near all-time highs we closed at 42 so above any candle close possible and I'll be really excited to see what happens here in the next couple hours the one cool thing <laughs> I will have to say about having a one month old is the fact that I, I I wake up every two hours now because the daughter wakes up and so I'm always awake for pre-market open now so I can always look at this um, yeah so hopefully that makes sense but basically they they triggered a large sell order to trigger the algos to start taking out stop losses and then by the time it broke the uptrend, then after that, it, people knew the game was up. So once it broke the 38 mark, like for me, um, I own about a thousand shares plus my stock options. So I sold my thousand shares. I had a trailing stop and they sold around 40. And then my next trailing stop was at uh, 37. So all my shares were sold at 37. I had an average of uh, 27. Because I bought before earnings. So I just was like, well, I'm going to make at least $10 on my shares. So I was good to go there. Not everyone had the luxury of getting the price that I had. But I posted it for everyone. It was widely communicated that I was long BGFE at 27. And then I added after that because of that. And I actually added today. And so my average is 42.40 on one account and forty dollars and eighty cents on another so if you want i was buying after hours today um it was the last thing i could do to long the stock before it really people start to realize how fundamentally undervalued it is because we just like the stock so um if you play it tomorrow know the risk if you want to long it great but know the risks that the shorts aren't going to give up easily. So, I have loved BX, by the way, since $90. Um, I started following this around here. Or, where, no, around. Yeah, here it is. So, I started following this around $90. My old chart's still up here. It's funny how great it worked. <laughs> and it's just so nutty now. Like, this is one of the craziest nutty stocks uh fun i haven't looked at the financials lately wow they're still great oh man they're still great yeah you can st still long the stock it's still great <laughs> i mean it's kind of a rising wedge now but you might get one more leg up My average was originally 25. I sold at 40. I bought options at 30. And I bought stock again after hours today. Ah. Alright. We're going to do a couple more. I'm going to bust out my $500 bottle of scotch. And I'm going to drink a little bit of that to end the night. Because I've, I'm up almost, I'm up a ridiculous amount of money this month, so I think we could celebrate a little. So I'm drinking a 21-year-old single malt right now. Here's the thing: if you're gonna drink a single malt scotch, it better be legal. Edit. All right. 
So this is something we covered um, a little bit ago. So we covered this right here because they had a conference where they were going to release uh, champagne's good. They were going to release data. The data was bad and the stock tanked. I don't know why you want me to look at it now. I'm assuming you bought here and are now bag holding um, when you should have just sold right away and counted as a loss. But it does have a couple things going for it. I guess earnings were pretty good because it pumped off of it. It did also hold above uh, this pivot zone here. So as long as it holds above this pivot zone, you're probably pretty good on it. I mean... From my understanding, the data wasn't super bad, but the short interest, short interest. All right, now you got my interest. Let me look at the short interest on this. Let me pull it up and Dane, if the short interest isn't good, you don't get any more requests tonight. But if it is good, you can request anything you want. It's not good. So leave it alone, move on, look at something else. Here's your data. 13% interest, no no cost to borrow, no utilization. It's not there's no no way this ever, ever, ever gets short squeezed. Can you do Microsoft? Can you do FCX, can you do POW? Can you do Palantir? Can you do MU? Can I do 8 WAC? I will do Palantir because I love that it got crushed on earnings. I also love that it's making a bear flag, and I also love that my fundamental thesis is finally probably going to come true. So, I have always said. This is a 15 to $20 stock. I don't think it's terrible in the $20, low $20 range. Master Wu Jr., Julian, I will PayPal you a share of BGFE. You got it. Absolutely. You tell me when you want to sell, I will sell the share and you can have the money from it. So I have never wavered from PayPal from when it was $10. So here's the thing. I was once super long on, on uh, Palantir, so not PayPal. I was once super long on Palantir. Right here was when I longed Palantir. I bought Leaps, $10 Leaps, and I sold... I believe here because this is where I thought it was fundamentally valued I missed out on a huge run I did I'll admit it but I made a frick ton of money going from 10 to 18 dollars and the reality is is I still think it's worth where this red line is and I thought I was vindicated here and then it's kind of done a bunch of things but the thing is is in today's world of investing you can't just go fundamentals now you have to take social sentiment into it it's never been more important than today social sentiment in socks it used to be you could just invest based on the money they made the future they're gonna have but now like the game is Twitter reddit Wall Street bets like all this stuff you have to take into account and because Palantir was pumped so hard it gets artificially propped up above where it should be valued and this happens everywhere tesla is the golden child for this and people and, and the worst part is is tesla keeps getting shorted and then retail keeps pumping it back up so it's, it's just a never-ending cycle of a short it's the longest short squeeze i've seen ever like it just keeps getting squeezed it got squeezed from two hundred dollars to now five thousand dollars pre pre split right or six thousand it got all the way almost to six thousand dollars it's the craziest thing I ever saw like like when it hit nine hundred dollars pre split it's 
one of the it was where I sold my long on Tesla and I told all my friends and family not to long it and then of course it goes to 6000 so I look like an idiot right there but I'll be honest like yeah on Tesla I look like an idiot because it's gone so high but I still think it's a like at this point $400 stock like but I love Tesla I love Elon I love what they're doing I just fundamentally like it's the it's the fundamentalist in me that says it's a 420 470 dollar stock um but hey let's enjoy it while we can right you know you live in the moment they call it a trash can not a trash cannot I say that all the time you know and Palantir is the golden child for that phrase so um all right let's move on talked about that enough Ford oh my god like so if you've been following me for a couple years this was the coolest thing I had ever seen I said I said right here I told everyone that follows me I said buy Ford leaps buy two year out Ford leaps nine dollars you'll never regret it ever it's at twenty dollars now best investment ever and I got made fun of why are you buying that grandpa stock oh that stock's so boring but it's just clean uptrend like so like Ford is not gonna go out of business the USA government will not let Ford go out of business because the economy runs off of Ford and the economy runs off of GM do you know why so the supply chain issue is so great is because Ford and GM drive so much of the US economy the government will never let it fail because it's not just the cars, it's everything that goes into it. It's the electronics, it's the paint, it's the steel, it's the rubber, it's the glass. They use so much raw materials and it drives so much of the economy, the, the auto business. It is literally what built America is the auto business. So at this point, I can't really tell you to long forward much more. Um, I would wait for a pullback on Ford, maybe to 1650. You know, let's see this cup and handle come back. But if you're not in Ford, wait till the dividend gets paid out. You might get a nice uh, retest after the dividend. But uh, I actually do drive a Ford, so I love Ford. Well, let me rephrase that. I drive a Lincoln, which is a Ford. Um, I'm a huge fan of the look of Lincolns. Um, I don't, like, for me, like, it's a way to buy luxury but still pay middle class prices. So, yeah, it's a big deal where Ford is at right now. It's, it cannot be understated. Drive foreign? You can go move to another country. <laughs> we buy domestic. I like Mustangs. What was the movie? Was it The Postman? Where the guy was named Ford Lincoln Mercury? So. I have a Cybertruck order. Tesla's American. Like I said, I like Tesla. I like their products. It's the fundamentalist to me. So, all right, what am I seeing? What are you trying to show me on Boeing? Because all I see is a downtrend. And to be honest with you, like Boeing is like one of the trashiest stocks available. That's like, see, Boeing is the girl you call at 2 a.m. when you're drunk. And you need something and you can't you can't find anything else you're like I'm just gonna go back to Boeing and it always disappoints it never fails so it's just one of those things where you just delete it from your phone book and move on so yeah if you bought Boeing at under a hundred absolutely 
Boeing, I will say, is another stock the American government will never let it go out of business. There's no way. There's the it's the only American company that makes domestic planes, and and it's a military contractor, so they can't go out of business. So they will always get bought out or bailed out. I have a suggestion for you, though. If you want to long Boeing, don't actually long Boeing. One of the first newsletters, the very first investing newsletter I wrote, I said, don't invest in Boeing when it, and this was at when it was, I think, like $100, $150. I said, don't invest in Boeing. Invest in Spirit Aerosystems. Invest in Spirit Aerosystems. And there's a very fundamental reason for it. Because Spirit doesn't have all the overhead and everything. They have guaranteed orders. They're the ones that make everything for Boeing. So I said at $20 right here, I said long Spirit. It's going to at least 50 And it hit 53 so it hit my price target here. So at this point, I'm not sure it's you can still get in Spirit. But I like, if you're going to long one or the other, I like Spirit Aerosystems um, better than Boeing, in my opinion. So, I will say their fundamentals I haven't looked at recently. Uh, <laughs> they don't look great now that I'm looking at them. Hold on, I gotta pull this up here. Ooh, uh, yikes. Alright, they have a better, they still have better fundamentals than Boeing. Boeing's fundamentals are really bad, by the way. Um, like, Boeing got absolutely murdered. But, like, the, like, I can't tell you how bad COVID was for Boeing. Like, it was, like, bad, bad. Like, they have more debt than assets bad. Like, they didn't always, oh, they, oh, man, Boeing spends so much money. They have so much debt. Do not like that. They're able to meet their short-term debt, but the fact that they have negative $9 billion in cash flow is really bad. And I guess that's why I think Boeing's going to eventually fill this gap down to 160. Like, my long-term price target on Boeing is 160. It may not be what you want to hear. It's very contrary to a lot of my fellow people, but um, I think Boeing's going to 160 eventually. So... American Airlines is, we were talking about this when it was around $10. You know what's funny? <laughs> I find this one of the best stories. I'm just going to get the data so I'm not wrong in this. So, Airlines was one of the biggest losses Berkshire Hathaway had ever taken. Um, not only did he buy the top, he sold the bottom. I think this is like testament to, to how the best investors of all time still get it wrong I'm just trying to find the price that he bought and sold at so just give me a second so I think he bought
All right. <laughs> so Berkshire Hathaway's price average was around here. Let me see. I'm pretty sure he sold it at eleven dollars. He had eight eight billion eight to nine billion invested. He owned 44 million shares. And he sold right, I think he sold. He sold here. So he literally lost 70% of his investment on this, which is funny because like, a month later it doubled in price <laughs> so when you think you know it all like the greatest investors get it wrong too but the fact that they diversify their other earnings will make up to it and I got a, I got a, a crown jewel of that so all the money that yeah no stop loss all the money he put in there you know what he bought you know what this candle is right here? So, Warren Buffett right here bought literally like 25, I think, to 30 billion of Bank of America with an average of around $23. Right here is when he was buying. And they reported it right here. I think this is when they reported it. And that's when it gapped up to $28. And look at it, it's at 46. So he just made all the money. Yeah, all he owned Delta too. He owned all the, he owned like three different uh, airline stocks. He bought, uh, Delta, American Airlines, and a couple, of, and I think some others. But the big thing is, is like, as bad as some of his investments are, the other investments always outweigh his bad ones. So, Bank of America was freaking fantastic. What a good... What a good entry here in this $23 range. He not only does he get the 2% dividend, but he's also doubled his original investment already. Plus gotten an extra 2 to 5% depending on the dividend. So, he's gotten 1, 2, 3... Four dividend pays out, plus doubled his original share price. Like, and you know the other thing is, is like I don't think Bank of America's done. Like, it's still only a 12, 13 PE ratio. Man, they have three trillion in assets. It's crazy. Um, eight billion and like they're just this. This is probably still gonna go up to 70, 75. I think Bank of America's great. So. I just don't like they've turned it around so well they're doing really good uh, my opinion like that was one of his this is one of his best events like his best investment ever is Apple Apple is what made us famous so like this is what happens with these people so as much as these greatest investors ever of all time sound they usually are primarily attached to one horse so Berkshire Hathaway they are attached to Apple. Kathy Woods, her whole fame and fortune, Tesla. They get one thing right and they go big and they hold it forever. And when they write on that, they look super smart. I think Buffett and Berkshire has a much better track history with terms of spreading it around, but Kathy nailed it on Tesla. I'll give her that. When it was at two hundred dollars, she said it could go five thousand, and it went to almost six thousand. So, congratulations. She looks super smart for saying that. I will say a lot of her other investments have been a little shakier. She keeps buying this skills, which is interesting to me. So.
one second. Just trying to get caught up on some messages here. Yeah, the Rivian IPO. Yeah, that is uh, very interesting. I'm going to be watching that because Amazon's going to... Amazon's going to run off of that. What's some good leaps? I'm actually in a lot of steel and uranium leaps right now, so... If you guys want, we can talk a little bit about that, but um, I'm probably going to be getting off here soon. I've been going for about two hours, a little bit longer night, but I've been enjoying it. So, oh no, what happened to my fractal? I've been long uranium since seven dollars since here. Got in right around here on this breakout. I'm not inebriated, no. I'm working on it. Cause otherwise I'm not gonna sleep tonight. But no, uh, <laughs> I'm good. Make sure. Ooh, the wife may have texted me. That's not good. But I like your I like UUU and I like X. These are my two big ones. So these are fundamentally undervalued. I didn't touch Trade Desk. Uh, this was a newsletter play which we absolutely nailed. Even the price action was to the T. Um, I like X going to 50. I think it can go to 50. It's been there before. You know, last steel squeeze we saw, 2011 was a commodity squeeze. Uh, we're going to be going through that again. So I expect similar price action. Uh, let's do it. Let's... let's see if we can make a fractal on this. See if the squeeze is similar. Ooh, almost was. Yeah, all of the things I'm trying to do aren't really working, are they? Oh, here we go. Maybe this is better. Let's do it that one. It's not quite the same. Like I said, it's not always the same, but um, CLF, X, Nucor, those are my top three steel stocks. The only reason I like X primarily is because of the short interest around 25%. Um, Nucor fundamentally is the best steel, largest steel maker, best steel maker in the US, um, best margins, uh, best technology. U.S. Steel is literally, if you want to invest in America, you invest in United States Steel. United States Steel built more of America than any other company. If you want to talk about the ultimate infrastructure stock, United States Steel is literally something to take pride in. It's one of the greatest companies of all time in the United States. It's one of the greatest companies that built the United States. They're the ones that helped us win World War II, and they're the ones that 
powered us through the economic revolution through the 20th century like i cannot be more proud of this company um in terms of like the history of it and being having a degree in history and studying labor history um not saying u.s steel always did things the best but in terms of like u.s history united states steel is at the top of what's formed the history of the United States. And they're going to be vital as the second largest steel producer in the U.S. Almost identical. Um, and they may sur they may eventually claim the number one steel producer again. Uh, but Nucor currently is. But U.S. Steel is slowly coming back to, to the height of where they used to be. And... Yeah... And I think U.S. Steel, this is the beginning of a wonderful run on U.S. Steel. And I think the short squeeze potential on it, plus the infrastructure, plus just steel prices in general. Um, I love U.S. Steel and I have large parts of my portfol portfolio in them. So, yeah, Zenon, I'm holding a 20-run-year-old Glenlivet Archive in my hand. I'd pour us each a glass and we could talk for hours about history. I love history. Um, I almost was a history professor. So um, it's one of my favorite subjects. Um, my, my absolute favorite subject. Because it's literally what developed the world. Is I love religious history in general. So X is a boomer stock. And so is Ford. But these make you money. If you want instant gratification, go buy BGFV. <laughs> so let's let's wrap it back. I haven't looked at futures tonight. Are they still crashing? Uh, they look terrible. Let me look at the 15 minute. Bouncing a little. Haven't gotten back over the pivot. Um. I'm not very bullish on the market right now. This is why I love playing short squeezes. They don't care what the market does, by the way. So, after, if I make a million dollars, I may take off till after Thanksgiving, if I'm going to be honest with you, Cash. I'll still be around and hanging out, um, but we'll see. I'll probably just buy long term. I don't know. I'll day trade a small amount. Just because I can never not have money in play. It's a gambling aspect on me. But. So, um, I think that's going to wrap it up for me. It's getting a little late. Been on for two hours. Um, let's see where BGFV opens tomorrow. I feel pretty good about it, to be honest with you. I think, uh, I think tonight's the night. I think tomorrow's... I always said Wednesdays are always the days that things get squeezed. I don't know why that is. Well, I, I kind of know what it is, but... Um, yeah, STC is just another wish copper you gotta start we've had this conversation so many times like you gotta stop chasing those things you gotta take profits when you can and you can't once with the with the fin twit stock stock squeeze things when the momentum dies you get out and this is the I'm gonna say this about BGFB when the momentum and the chatter starts to die, don't hold it forever. Unless you like the dividends and all of that, 
BGFE is a little different than most of the squeezes I've ever been a part of, where fundamentally, like I said, it's still a good stock and should be worth $100. But you're going to get selling pressure because people are going to cash in because they're going to treat it like other squeezes. So just keep that in mind that while it is fundamentally undervalued and isn't like other squeezes that we've played, there's still going to be a waterfall of people taking profits at some point. So make sure you have trailing stops. Make sure you have stop limits. Do not let your green trades go red. Okay? What's the mini chart on the red? On the right? Are you talking about the forward curve? Or what are you talking about? I live in Wisconsin, so I'm in central time. I'm a cheesehead. All right, I think that's going to do it for me tonight. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have... Oh, this right here. I don't actually use that. I don't know what that is. Forward curve. It's just part of trading view. I'm not sure what that is, actually. I've never really paid attention to it. I don't sleep. I just plug myself in and keep going. I'm on battery power right now and be on plug power later. No, I didn't look at Zoom, but kind of burned out now, so I'll be on tomorrow. We can chat and uh, we can go from there. Alright, everyone. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. I hope you all make money. I hope you're all safe, smart, cool, calm, collected. And we will go from there. Hopefully you guys are picking out your colors for your Lambos tomorrow for, for BGFV if you're in it.